Hey, 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 Nikki Brown here. No matter where you are and what part of the world you're in, I hope that you're having a good day. So I wanted to make a comment about Denea Jackson, who is Derek Jackson's ex-wife. I watched an interview with her, and basically she admitted that um, Derek had always been that way, right? They dated in college. They dated for about eight or nine years before she got pregnant and eventually married. And I think she was pregnant with her, their second child before they actually got married. And so the entire time he basically um, was unfaithful to her. And when he asked to marry her, um, and she doesn't really know what made him or what prompted him to ask her if it was because of the children and he wanted to be an honorable man and have his children raised in a single parent household. If it was because he had a conversation with her mom or whatever the thought process was, um, when he asked to marry her, she felt like she won. And just for myself, I don't really understand that that mentality because if someone cheated on me after they said they would be in a committed relationship with me, my thought process was you can have him, I'm good. Because in my mind, if he's already being unfaithful, once you accept a man into your life, he feels like you've accepted him for who you are, the way that he is, who he is, the way that he is in most cases. So if you accept a man who cheats, nine times out of ten, ten he's not going to stop cheating. He's just going to feel like you're comfortable and okay with it and that you're not going anywhere. That's a lot of men's mentality. Not at all. May not be all. Some say it was an accident, but I don't understand how you could actually pull out your thing, put it in somebody, and pump several times until you release. To me, that's not an accident, a mistake, whatever word you choose to use. It's none of those things, in my opinion. And then some people say, well, we're not meant to be uh, monogamous, and that's a European construct, or that's the westernized construct. And all that may be true, right? But at the same time, not every man wants to be promiscuous and sleep with several women or as the young people say, be for the streets. There are lots of men who are faithful. They can't even see themselves trying to juggle more than one woman because it's a lot of work to deal with one, right? And some women feel the same way. Some want to be sexually free. This is not judgment to each his or her own. But the point is, again, I never had that mentality like, oh, if he chooses me, that means I won. Again, my mentality was you can have him because he's for the streets. And so most of the time when we get into relationships or before we marry someone, they show us who they are. Right. And as I've stated several times, like the Maya Angelou quote says, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. So some people have that mentality that, oh, men are going to cheat, so I might as well just get me one and let him do whatever he wants to do. Some people do not have that mentality, and they want someone who has more self-control and self-respect for themselves because really you're giving your energy away to people who probably don't deserve it, and you're bringing that energy back home. So if this person has an attitude, right, is nasty, Again, their energy is attaching itself to this person. You can't wash away energy, right? You can't even wash away some of the infections that are asymptomatic in a man and they pass on to you. Bacterial infections, vaginal yeast infections, some of those things get transferred too, right? Some people call them, you know, call it spiritual warfare or karmics or, you know, Incubus and succubus energy, whatever you decide to call it, it's just not good, right? And some people's, you know, juices don't mix well with other people's juices. So although people might feel like they can do whatever they want to do, you can do that with somebody who's okay with it. But you cannot and should not try to force someone into that type of lifestyle if they're not interested in it. And we also have to realize that we can't change anyone except ourselves, right? The only person you can own or control is you. People change. People get fed up. 
like Danae Jackson. She got fed up and she finally decided she was going to leave. But she dealt with it for at least nine years before they even got married. Right? Then once they got married or once he proposed, again, she felt like, oh, I won. Prior to him proposing, they weren't even in a relationship. They were, um, you know, still intimate with each other or still with each other sexually. And she said she would pass by some of the other women that he slept with. Um, I think on her way to and from work, she said. But she also admitted that she was coming from an unhealed place, right? She had a lot of trauma. She had been raped prior to her meeting Derek, like maybe three weeks prior. She never told anyone. And again, she was coming from an unhealed place. And I know exactly how that is. Um, I was raped, right? And the person who raped me was, uh, you know, my boyfriend at the time. This is the only time I ever cheated, and I learned my lesson the first time, right? He cheated on me, so I caught myself getting back at him by cheating on him. Him and his friend ran into my house. Basically, I ran, I hid for a long time. They eventually found me and, you know, raped me because I wasn't consensual. Then they went outside and told everybody that I wanted to, and like, you know, they, I just voluntarily had sex with both of them, which was not the truth, right? But at that point, I didn't have anyone to tell. I didn't have anyone to talk about it to. And I basically had to eat the rumor, right? Because now you are, you go outside and you tell people that I just wanted it and I wanted to do it. And so now there's this rumor about me that's not true, right? So again, I couldn't tell my, my, my mother because I would have gotten in trouble because how did they get into the house in the first place? But it's because we had a porch door and the door was not, didn't lock. And one day when I, you know, this again, this was my boyfriend. So I let him know that the door didn't lock. So of course, quite naturally, when he went to break into the house, which he didn't necessarily break in, the door was broken. And he, so he just pushed the door open and came in because he knew that I was home alone by my, you know, for a certain amount of hours before anyone came home. So him is his friend. And actually, his friend, I, I'm going to assume that his friend was a virgin. His friend thought he had it in, but it was just in between my leg. And he still, you know, can't, got off on that and then got up and ran. Of course, I wasn't going to tell him that it's not in there. I, I left that right on the lawn and let him do what he thought he was doing and go head on. But the other one did actually do, you know, he actually raped me. And that's, I guess that's what you would call date rape. And again, um, I didn't tell anybody because I felt like I was going to get in trouble. There's the shame. There's the guilt, right? And I didn't want to get in trouble. And then, I, like I said, it was this rumor spread um, that I was consensual and it wasn't. And so, you know, just me as one person and these two people saying that it was, a lot of people didn't believe me. And so there wasn't anything that I could do about it. And so I can relate to Denea when it comes to that, because like she said, she was in college and it was a party and she knew the guy and, you know, he wanted her and um, he ended up um, grabbing her from behind, you know, pulling her down into the basement or they were already in the basement, whichever one applies. And he basically did what he needed to do. And then. She went upstairs. She didn't say anything. Again, this is embarrassing. This is shameful, especially when it's somebody you know. But this is what they call date rape. Again, because you know the person, but it's just not consensual. And so who are you going to tell? Like, who's going to believe you? Right? A lot of people aren't going to believe you. So you have this guilt, this shame, this blame. You know, even if somebody does believe you, in your mind when it happens at the time, you don't think that. I had one of my best friends at the time, she was raped by this guy we went to high school with and he pulled her into the house and he raped her. And so, you know, the very first time it wasn't consensual, but then she turned around and spent the night at his house and consensually had sex with him twice after that. 
Because again, the guilt, the shame, the blame, because who do you, who, who's going to believe you? And when I asked her, I was like, so you didn't tell anybody? She said, no. Who was she going to tell? Because she had a certain reputation already. So no one was going to believe her. That's what, how she felt in her mind. Nobody's going to believe me. And, you know, I might as well just go ahead and do it anyway. And so for a young woman who may or may not have daddy issues or mommy issues, and again, the Denea Jackson did admit that she had certain issues. Her issue was abandonment, which a lot of us have, right? That fear of rejection, not wanting to reject him because it would make her feel rejected, right? Not wanting to, not being in a place where she felt like she was unwanted. She wanted him to want her. She grew up as the nerdy girl, you know, she said who went to a predominantly Caucasian high school. And, you know, although she had a boyfriend prior to that, you know, this was, she went to a HBCU. So this is the first time, you know, uh, a man of the same nationality approached her. He was very charming and he was very sweet and he wooed her, but never really committed to her. And so she never even told him about the situation that occurred. And she grew up in a household where, you know, her parents weren't even in a relationship, but they had a child. A lot of people are in that situation. You know, again, that makes you feel abandoned or rejected because you have parents who didn't really want you. They just got together and got pregnant. And although they stayed together, I think she said she was 11 or 12 when her dad passed away. So that that deepens that feeling of abandonment. So then when somebody shows you attention and they're very charming and you grew up as the nerdy chubby girl who, you know, was just quiet and didn't say anything. And you have the 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 athlete, um, you know, asking you to tutor him and and go out with him. It makes you feel special. It makes you feel important. And so that's basically how it went down. She interacted with someone who made her feel good, who made her feel wanted and needed. Although at the same time, he made her feel rejected and abandoned because she attracted the energy that was inside of her. We attract what we, who we are and not necessarily what we want. Because who she was, was the, still the little girl who felt a, rejected and abandoned by, by her parents who didn't really want her. Who just got together, you know, because, she, you know, she was a product of their, what they called it, a love child. I remember when somebody said that about my mom, you know, with me and with my father having me. And this person thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And I didn't think it was funny at all. And then her dad went on to marry someone else. So now she had a stepmom. Camera's still going. It said I had it. My battery's going dead. So I'm going to go ahead and end this in a minute. But if I'm not mistaken, this was her story too, unless this was another video that I was watching. But, you know, him being with another woman made her feel rejected and abandoned too. So I just wanted to share those thoughts. If you'd like to hear more about my story or her story or similar stories or just the feelings and emotions that come up when you feel abandoned and rejected, just let me know in the comments and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, love y'all. Later. Mwah.